Hi, I'm Mark Gaylor, Sony Alpha Ambassador, and in this series of short video tutorials, we're going to deep dive into Sony's new menus that we see on cameras such as the A7 IV and the Alpha One. So without much further ado, let's get started. Let's take a look at the playback options on Sony Alpha cameras. Now here I'm using the Alpha 7 IV camera and I press the review button or playback button on the bottom of the camera and then I can change the way I view that image by pressing the display button. Now if I press that display button a number of times I'll come into this uh, view which shows me much more information. It also splits the histogram up into the individual RGB channels and just the luminance values. So that is an alternative way of looking at this. It will also show any clipping in this view. So for instance, if I'm looking at this uh, image and it starts uh, blinking at me, then it's basically warning me that the uh, image is uh, possibly overexposed. Now this is the JPEG image or the JPEG embedded in a raw file. It is uh, not actually uh, a true representation of the histogram you might see see in a raw editor if you're a raw shooter. So uh, that is um, something that you should look at. And if you're interested in um, getting more information about it, then check out my Zebras 109 Plus for raw shooters uh, video tutorial. Okay, so let's go back to that uh, display view of an image that is uh, quite clearly the highlights are not overexposed. Now if I press the AF on button, you'll notice that there's a small magnifying glass just to the right side of that AF on button because it changes its uh, behavior in playback uh, view. So this is where we can zoom in to the image. Now by default it will zoom in on the area that the camera focused on and it will zoom in quite a long way. So the enlarge initial positioned uh, in the menu, see I've come down to the playback menu here and we're on page two, enlarge initial position and it's going by default to the focus position. If you want to revert and change this just to the central area that is an option but I prefer the focus position because if IAF is engaged then it will uh, go straight in and show you the eye to see whether it's um, in sharp focus or not. Now sometimes the magnification can be a long way and it, for some people it might be too much magnification. So we are able to uh, use that control wheel and scroll out until we get a slightly less zoomed in view. Now if, you, if that is uh, the, the preferred initial magnification that is also an option that we can choose. Uh, we can go to previous magnification rather than the full magnification each time we now zoom in by pressing that AF on button. Okay, now if we press the AEL button, again you can see there's, a, there's an icon in the upper right side of that AEL button because again that is a button that changes its functionality when we're in playback mode. Now this uh, uh, zooms out to show us the date view and so we can now quickly scroll through images on different days. We can also move over to the left side by pressing the left side of the control wheel and go from date view into folder view. So if you've split up your captures over numerous folders, you can then locate a previous uh, folder that you've been recording images to. Okay, so let's go into that playback menu again. We're on page one, we're going to view mode. And here we can see the same options, date view, folder view, movie view. So if you're trying to uh, just identify a certain movie because you've been recording them uh, to the same memory card as your stills, going into movie view will be a faster way of locating those movies. Now I can get uh, um, to this view without going into the menus of course. We can just press the AEL button, uh, move over to the left side and then go up and down to select date view, folder view, movie view without having to go into the menus. And now we'll come down to the playback menus. Uh, we're now on page seven, 
display as group. Now I've switched this on, it probably will be off by default, but if you're often shooting with the drive mode set to high and you're shooting uh, sequences of images, you can display the sequence as a group. So as you're moving and backwards and forwards through the images to review them, it'll just show you the sequence, not every image in the sequence. So here we have a particular sequence that I've captured. Now if I want to view the the individual images in that sequence, I'll need to press uh, the center button in the control wheel to expand that group and then I can go through each one individually. And when I finished going through, I'll press the center button again and come back into that group view focus frame display. Now that means that if you've been um, using um, a small spot focus point or tracking and you want confirmation as to where the camera focused, this focus frame display being the on position will actually show you where the camera focused. Now I have to say that occasionally it can be a little bit inaccurate, especially if we're in a, say, a high drive mode, we're panning the camera very quickly. I have noticed the um, the feedback for where the focus area can drift from where the camera actually focused. So that is uh, something to be wary of. But in most instances where we're working with slow moving subjects, the focus area um, point that you're seeing is usually accurate. Okay, so we've gone back to the playback menu and we're looking at playback target here. Now, playback target is a way of switching between looking at the images on the uh, memory card 1 or memory card in slot 2. So this is something that we'll probably want to um, access very quickly without having to come into the menus. So you see here I'm coming into the menu, select playback media, by default it'll probably be slot 1, but I can then move it to slot 2. Now the reason I would probably want to do this is I separate out uh, shooting raw files to slot 1 and JPEGs to slot 2. If I'm going to edit, crop, share an image, it'll usually be the JPEG image on slot 2 and that's where I'll want, be wanting to review the images. So you will probably want to um, alternate between reviewing images on slot 1 and slot 2 if you are also into sharing JPEG images. OK, so I'll show you how to set that up as a custom key so we don't have to dive in here into the menus. So I've come into the yellow setup menu, page 3, chosen custom key settings for playback. And then we can look at um, what settings are already set by default. Now you'll notice that um, the C3 key has already been um, uh, set up. Um, and that is the upper left hand key. That is protect. That puts a little lock. That stops you from accidentally deleting the file. Now I'm a bit wary of actually protecting files because that can cause issues if you're trying to import and edit images in Lightroom if you have a locked file on the memory card. So just a word of warning there um, when you're choosing to use that protect um, uh, C3 key. We also have the FN button marked as 3, slightly confusing here. That uh, line item 3 is actually the FN button and that is where we send to smartphone um, in playback. OK, it will be the function menu when we're shooting movies or stills, but in playback it is send to smartphone. So there we have it there. And that is a very useful feature, but a couple of the ones that need setting up is the rating, which I've assigned to the movie button on the Alpha 7.4, but in playback mode, it'll be a rating. Here, this is something that we can actually put a star rating on a file, which I actually prefer to actually protecting a file. I'll just show you the rating first. If we do uh, press that um, uh, movie button in playback mode, I'll now get the option to rate this file one, two, three, four, or five stars. I only ever use one or nothing when I'm rating my files. Here I've assigned the um, uh, the C2 button on the top of the camera, which is focus area when we're just uh, normally in shooting mode. But here in playback mode, I've uh, selected it as crop. Now you can only crop the JPEG images. You can't crop raw images in camera. So here I am uh, uh, cropping an image. And I have a whole video tutorial just on cropping images. But as you can see, I can... Um, uh, 
go in tighter and I can also change from a horizontal to a vertical framing and I can also change the aspect ratio or shape of that crop frame and so this is ideal if we then want to share that cropped image to our smartphone. OK, so uh, on the page three of the playback menus, we have uh, Selection Mimo. I'm not too sure what that Mimo is for uh, A74 because we don't have the ability to put a voice recording on files in the Alpha 74. Maybe that will come with a firmware upgrade. So uh, there is the uh, Protect option. And there is the rating option, which again I can access via a custom key. And here is the rating set for that custom key. Now I will come into this line item in the menu because I want to set it up. It's not where we assign the custom key. That will be in the yellow setup menu. This is where we decide uh, what that custom key does when we are rating images. And you can cycle through all five, but what I will do is I will uncheck all of them so that when I press that um, uh, uh, the movie button, now the rating button, I will just put a one star rating on that file. So I'll just submit that as my preferred rating for that custom key. If you are rating images, um, it's also useful to come into page seven of your playback options and come to the image jump settings. So what this allows you to do is to choose uh, different ways of cycling through and reviewing your images. So if you're only trying to show people the images that you've rated on your camera, you don't want to be cycling through every image you captured. You only want to be showing somebody the images that you've rated. So you can set the front dial to only um, cycling through images that have a star rating on them. You can set your rear dial to go through them one by one or choose another way of cycling through the images. And I've um, also set up the uh, rear dial to go through them by 10 images. OK, so that is um, uh, that will be the uh, exposure compensation dial when we're in shooting mode. But I've set up that uh, right rear dial to go through the images uh, in 10 lots. So this is a faster way of cycling through maybe uh, hundreds of images. And you could also set that to uh, cycle through in 100 images rather than 10 images. This is another way of changing how we delete images. Now I'm, I very rarely delete images on the camera. I usually wait till post-production. But if you are trying to clear up maybe some card space, there's a faster way of um, selecting an image and then deleting it. You can just uh, press the delete uh, button twice and have that delete the image uh, automatically without uh, cycling through an additional menu item. It will warn you. It's, it's a bit wary. It's trying to protect you from accidentally deleting images here. Obviously it is much easier to press that um, trash can twice and delete the image. Playback menu, um, page 5, edit. This is where we go into the crop. Uh, but again if you come up with this screen, unable to crop image, it's because you're looking at a raw image and you need to switch um, over to the um, uh, to the other playback media, which I've set up as the C1 custom key there to uh, automatically then cycle between um, slot one and slot two. OK, you have an ability to rotate an image, but I rarely use that. I will rotate an image in post-production if needed. We have an, uh, an option to copy all of the images from slot one onto slot two. This might be useful if you're trying to give somebody a memory card with all of the images captured at that particular event on that day without having to wait to go back home. OK, so playback menus again, viewing, page six. We've got um, options there for uh, playing back uh, time lapse or interval shooting uh, sequences of images there. And we can also um, uh, put a slideshow uh, on all of the images that we've captured. So I don't personally use these options, but they are there. OK, so final page on that playback um, options there, page seven. We've got the image index, but we can access by that by pressing the AEL key. 
we've got uh, dose display rotation this is not where we actually rotate the image from being horizontal to vertical or vice versa this is a way where if we do shoot an image in vertical mode it will be displayed full screen if we turn the camera into vertical mode to review the image so if we're viewing in a vertical image like this on the screen if we've got that auto selected if we rotate the camera it'll go full screen on the monitor Monitor, obviously and that is uh, making best use of the screen real estate on the camera. If you found this information useful head over to patreon.com forward slash Mark Gaylor. I'm offering an alpha creative skills support channel where you can download a 500 page camera specific ebook and I've covered most of the late model alpha cameras. You'll also be able to download a cam set file if you own one of the later model alphas. You'll be able to set up your entire camera with just a single file copied to a memory card. I also offer additional uh, ebooks for people to download to help them master the uh, skills of creative photography and also a range of uh, one hour seminars that look at the uh, using the, uh, the camera gear to the best effect and also to build up your skills of photography in general. So head over to patreon.com forward slash Mark Gaylor.